The Republican candidate has now attracted a truly remarkable, surprising, and stellar group of compatriots around him, all highly accomplished and formidable figures, each with their own marked eccentricities. This is also not something that is likely to occur when someone pathologically narcissistic is running the show. That group includes Elon Musk, Tony Stark, genius, billionaire, playboy, philanthropist, Robert F. Kennedy, charismatic, eccentric, and intimidating, Tulsi Gabbard, who is in truth everything that Kamala Harris plays at being, Vivek Ramaswamy, smart, self-promoting, creative, witty, articulate, young, entrepreneurial, and fast on his feet, as well as J.D. Vance, the hillbilly, who pulled himself out of the Appalachians by his bootstraps, and who would, in sane times, be a veritable poster boy for the hypothetically support the poor and working class left. I have been joking to myself and some others in my circle that the X-Men have now arrived, in reality, to rescue the Republic. This is a transformation that has not yet been fully noted, even by the Trump campaign itself, despite its truly and surreally revolutionary nature. First and foremost among these new supporters and colleagues of the former president is Elon Musk. He truly is, and so comically, an X-Man, as is starkly evidenced by the new name of the controversial social media platform he now owns and was once known as Twitter. He has been struggling to build X, the everything platform, for decades with that particular moniker in his mind the whole time. The X-Men, like the Avengers, was a group of misfit mutants who came together to save the normies from the various monsters of the world. It is frequently the case that life imitates art, and there were perhaps real reasons stirring in the collective unconscious of the West, inclining us to look toward the eccentric and supernormal for our salvation. Fiction meets reality in the strangest of ways. In any case, Trump is now playing Charles Xavier to a strange group of mutants. Or if the similar metaphor of the Avengers is more attractive conceptually, Captain America to the gods and superheroes. Let us assess this group of remarkable people psychologically, one by one. I am in fact in a better position to do just that with them than I was in the case of Trump, as I have personally met Musk and the other group members several times, with the exception of VP candidate Vance, with whom a podcast is currently being scheduled. Let's begin our analysis with Mr. Elon Musk, the Tony Stark billionaire, although importantly, without the arms dealing. Before diving in, however, one final important fact should be noted pertaining to the former president. The Donald is evidently willing to share the spotlight with Musk and, apparently, to listen to what the eccentric but stunningly capable and clearly genius-level intellect former South African has to say. A cynic might opine that the former president is merely capitalizing on the additional attention his dalliance with Musk might bring him. I would object, however, as a clinician, on twin grounds. First, if Trump truly were narcissistic, Musk might be the last person with whom he would deli. The latter, Musk, rivals or exceeds him in fame and power and definitely surpasses him in sheer genius. That is not a situation that a truly self-centered and power-mad dictator-in-waiting is likely to appreciate. Second, with regard to garnering attention, the genuine narcissist is someone unlikely to believe that anyone else is likely to bring anything of value to the table, not already in display in consequence of their own boundless and singular specialness. My question is a little more simple. Um, what are some of the first courses of action you plan to take as a head of government efficiency if uh, Trump gets elected? And do you have any areas of concern in particular? Yeah, uh, well, that's a good question. Um, you know, I, I definitely, uh, you know, the focus right now is making sure that, that uh, 
Trump wins the election. Um, otherwise, it doesn't matter. And, and I think if, if, if uh, Trump loses, we're going to see, you know, our cities are going to get less safe. Uh, borders are obviously going to be wide open. Um, we're going to see government spending go ballistic. It's inflation go nuts. It's going to be just bad on, on every level. And, 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 and like, the, fundamentally, if the, if the current trend of, of you know, strang str of strangulation by overregulation is not turned around, we will never get to Mars. It just will be illegal. Um, and there will be a one planet civilization, or it won't be a space bearing civilization, and st Starfleet will, will never be real. Um, and we want Starfleet to be real. Yeah. So, you know, uh, now I, I've had quite a bit of interaction with the government, uh, you know, because uh, SpaceX is the biggest uh, NASA contractor, actually, does, does a lot of work for NASA. And I'm a big fan of the agency, by the way. Um, but, but it's, but there's, you know, there are expenditures that don't make a lot of sense, uh, that, that are wasteful. Um, and, uh, we, we need to put a stop to that. Um, honestly, the, 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 there's so much government waste that's going on that I would call it a target rich environment. Like, you, it's hard, like, in every direction, there's this just mad waste. And I think simply, if, if people simply know that, well, if, if they waste a ton of taxpayer money, they're going to get fired. That will immediately improve the situation. Immediately. It's like, yeah, it's, it's just literally, and, and, and I think, but actually, it's, it's going to be both carrot and stick. It's like, so if, if a government official is very effective in spending your money, to your, because taxpayer money is your money. <laughs> If they're effective in spending your money, they should be promoted. They should be rewarded. And if, and if they waste your money or, or do it do something that's basically corruption, they should be fired. Obviously, um, you know they have a duty to spend your money well. Yeah. Hey, Elon. Um, as a veteran who was deployed because of yeah. So what would you say to uh, an administration and a candidacy that is spreading lies or disinformation about the troops that are currently in combat, my friends? Yeah, can uh, you believe that was said? The dossier and Hunter Biden's laptop, President's decline, and so on. Yeah, I mean, during the, the you know, Trump-Kamala debate, she said there was no active duty soldiers out there. I'm like, I know a whole bunch of them. <laughs> what are you talking about? That's, just, that's, so, that's a shameful, terrible lie. Shit. And she wasn't even fact checked. And I'm like, are you kidding? <laughs> I mean, yeah, thank you. Yeah, and I just like to say, for, for the people, for the, for the Americans out there who are serving in dangerous places right now, unlike what Kamala said, thank you for your service to the country. Yeah.